In Pedic Zion of Egeres HaTshuva, chapter 7 of Egeres HaTshuva, the Alter Rebbe begins to explain what the, essence, the essential elements of Tshuva are. Earlier, the Rebbe established what the role of the fasting and of uh, tzedakah, what role those things play in Tshuva. And in Pedic Zion, he begins to talk about the Tshuva itself. The Tshuva itself consists of two parts. One is to arouse a feeling of compassion for God and for the Neshama because they are dragged down into unholiness through the sin. And the second is to subdue the animal soul and to humble it. And concerning this, the humbling of the animal soul, the Alter Rebbe goes on in today's Shir, which is on Daf Tzadik Zayim, or page 370, in the middle of the page. And how is it that the heart is broken and subdued? Very little is accomplished, very little, in terms of the subduing of the animal soul and of humbling the animal soul. Very little is accomplished through fasting and self-inflicted suffering in our generation. We don't have the strength to fast as much as is necessary, as, for example, in the times of King David. It says of King David that his Yetzirah was killed through fasting. And this is something that in our generation we're incapable of doing. We can't fast that much. And although earlier in Tanya, in the first part of Tanya, <clears throat> the al Rebbe quotes this verse, the statement from the Gemara, believe <clears> the <throat> Kibbit, that, that he was killed, the Yitzhara was killed through fasting, and there it seems to be saying that every Jew is capable of doing this. And that's why it's in Sefer Shal Benanim, because it's written for the Benanim, something that is possible in our generation. And here the al Rebbe is saying that this is not possible in our generation, because the difference is that in the, in the first part of Tanya, the Rebbe is talking about a Benani. And the Benani would be fasting only in order to, to kill off the Yetzirah from a position in which he already is not, in, is not capable of sinning. Because a Benani is one who didn't sin, doesn't sin, and will never sin. Here we're talking about a Baal Tshuva. We're talking about going from sinning to subduing the Yetzirah that it shouldn't... That it shouldn't uh, make any trouble anymore. For that you need much more fasting, and this amount of fasting we're not capable of. So very little is accomplished through the fasting. The main subduing of the heart, which means the animal soul, for the heart to be broken and subdued, in order to remove the, the spirit of unholiness and klipa, who lihiyes memorid duchushbena. This is accomplished by being an accountant of one's soul. To take account of oneself. The emik hadas with a with a deep concentration. Ha migdaiti obi nosi sho achas b'chol yeni lailo to to dwell deeply in his mind for an hour or two. For an hour every day or night, with Nei Tikon Chatzais, before the midnight prayer. Before Tikon Chatzais. With his Beinein, to consider the Ma Shepoal V'Osa Bechatoal Bechinaz Gyogal V'Sashchina Kenal. To consider, to reflect on the fact that what was, ac- what was done, what was accomplished through his sins, is that he brought the Shechina into exile, as mentioned before dragging godliness into a place that it doesn't want to be. The gam lakem nishmose the nafshe eliki is mechaya chayim baruchu. He also tore his godly soul away from the source of all life, which is God. The hevida lemokim hatuma v'hamoves and dragged it down into a place of unholiness, into a place of death. Hein hecholus asitra achra, which, what is this place of unholiness and death? the chambers of Klippa, into the world of, of unholiness. 
the Nas is Rebbechinas Merkava Alehem, and not only did the Neshama get dragged down to the same level where it was on the same plane with unholiness, with death, but even lower than that, because he becomes a vehicle for unholiness. The unholiness uses the person, and therefore the person is inferior, lower even than the unholiness itself. Because he lowers himself, he, he receives his energy and his life for his body from unholiness, as said before, that the difference between the earlier generations and times of the Beis Amigdash and our times is that in those generations, people lived off their godly soul, and if the godly soul was disliked, then the body would literally die. Whereas in our generation, we take our life from the ant from Klippa. And so our body lives from unholy energy, so that even if the godly soul gets separated from the body, the body doesn't literally die, but remains alive. So every time a person does an Aveda, he's basically submitting himself, lowering himself, and, and becoming the, reci the recipient of life. He becomes dependent on the unholiness that the unholiness should give him life. So he, he is humbling himself to the unholiness. And this is what the sages said, that the sinful, the wicked, even when they're alive, are called dead. Why are they described as dead? Not that while they're alive they are called dead, but their life itself is death. Because they are living from, they're receiving their life from a place which is basically death and unholiness. Etc. <coughs> when we say in the in the Tulin, and we say it also in Hallel, that the dead will do not praise you, do not praise God. We're not we're not mocking the dead. We're not making fun of the dead. And, and ridiculing their inability to praise God, which would be a very nasty, not nice thing to do. El Hakavano, the intention and the meaning of that verse is the Rishoyim Shebechayehem Kriyim Mesim, the wicked, the sinful, who, who their life itself is called death, Shemeval Vilim Esam Bemachshav Ezores, the unholiness to which he has become attached and from which he is receiving his energy, that unholiness distract him and confuse him with unholy thoughts, the Adam Berisham, as long as they remain in their sinfulness, and do not choose to do tshuva as is known. So that even while they're alive, their life is not their own, and they can't praise God because the unholiness, the tumah, the klipa, distracts them and is constantly dragging them off into unholy thoughts, preventing them from concentrating on godliness, which is true life. In the Hayyim Yim, for the 21st day of Tammuz, the Rebbe writes that we don't make a Shachiyonu in the three weeks, even if it's on Shabbos. In the body of the text, it says, it is written, make for me a Mishkan and I will dwell among them, which means in every, in every individual Jew. In every individual Jew, the core and the essence of the heart is holy and set aside for God's dwelling place, as a dwelling place for God. Now, the place of the Mikdash, of the Besam Mikdash, even in the time of Golos, and even in the time of its destruction, the place of the Mikdash remains holy. As it says in Shmei Sarabba in the Medrash, in Pedic Beis, Omar Ab Acha, Ab Acha taught that Lo'elam eina shechina zaza in the Kesel HaMaravi, that the shechina never left and never leaves the Kesel HaMaravi so that all the destruction was only in the structure, but not in the essence. And the same is true also with the individual Mikdash, which is every individual Jew. The foundation is always whole, pure, and, whole, and, and clear. As it says, Ani of I am asleep, but my heart is awake. And the Medrash Rabba says, I am asleep from mitzvahs, but my heart is awake to charity, to kindness. 
I'm asleep from tzedakah, but my heart is awake to do the tzedakah. Because the destruction, Rahman al that exists in the Jew is only in the structure as it was in the, in the literal Beis Hamikdash. Only that which is built up on top of the foundation. But the foundation itself of the individual private Migdash always remains in its holiness.